Superman can fly, move mountains and run faster than a speeding bullet. But for all his strengths, he still hasn't mastered the human art of concealing his underpants. The clues in the name, Big Blue. But before you call the fashion police, Supes has a surprisingly good reason for his upfront trunks. When you think of comic book heroes, Superman's suit is arguably the most recognizable one in the world. The primary colors, the signature cape, the yellow and red S emblem they're all trademarks of the classic superhero. They've become so ingrained in our cultural consciousness that it isn't surprising the duds have stood the test of time. In fact, the Man of Steel suit has remained familiar across comics and other media to this day. Sure, there've been some changes over time, mostly in the movie and TV franchises. But even when they do make adjustments, few designers dare to step too far away from the original. And it's fair to say that Superman's outside briefs are among the most recognizable elements in the ensemble. It's hard to forget them, right? They're certainly the easiest element to poke some light-hearted fun at as well. Yet devout fans are dedicated to the iconic look. Perhaps it's because those particulars resonate on a subconscious level. But where did Superman's comic book journey begin? Well, they say that a hero's only as good as his villain. And with that in mind, Soup's story could have been a lot different. You see, back in the 1930s, comic books weren't quite the same as they are today. Caped crusaders were far too busy putting thieves in jail to defend the planet. That was still the case when comic book artists and writers Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster came along. The pair conceived an idea for a more threatening presence, the first supervillain with a familiar name, Superman. Slow your roll, though this wasn't the same Superman we all know and love today. In 1933's The Reign of the Superman, a completely different person called Bill Dunn developed psychic abilities. But he did have some similarities to the Superman we're now familiar with. For example, Dunn's powers came from a drug that a scientist created using a fallen meteorite. Dunn predates Clark Kent, but he was actually something of a precursor to the classic superhero. Siegel and Shuster's next attempt at a Superman became the iconic archetype we now recognize. Many fans won't need reminding that he made his bow in the debut edition of Action Comics in April 1938. So how did the comic book writers come up with a hero like Superman? Though there's no definitive word on the subject, many people believe he's a work of faith. Siegel and Schuster were Jewish immigrants and their superhero concept has a lot in common with the origins of a prophet. In 2017, the Jerusalem Post wrote, The Man of Steel is based on a pretty blunt metaphor for Moses. Little baby soups escaped a dying planet on a rocket through space. It is very similar to how baby Moses escaped the wrath of the Pharaoh in a basket on the Nile River. It isn't surprising that Superman was given almost godlike powers to fight against the world's injustices, then. Of course, as the comic books raised the stakes, Soups got progressively more powerful. At his peak, he's strong enough to move planets and flies fast enough to time travel. That wasn't always the case, though. Back in the 1930s, aka Superman's Golden Age, his powers were significantly weaker. Even so, he was still far more potent than most other heroes at the time. He couldn't lift buildings, but he could shift large objects such as ships. And while he wasn't quite as speedy, he was still able to outpace a train. What about invulnerability? Golden Age Soups wasn't immune to artillery like his modern-day counterpart, though he was bulletproof. But arguably the largest difference to the Superman we know and love today was that the original hero couldn't fly. That's right he could leap tall buildings in a single bound, but it wasn't true flight. So while he's had some changes over the decades, such as his waxing and waning power levels, Superman's remained the same at his core. The same could be said for the Man of Steel's outfit, too. Several changes have been attempted on the pages of comic books, but none of them really stuck. One of the biggest changes followed a comic book series called The Death of Superman. A Kryptonian murder machine named Doomsday fought and apparently killed Soups. His death didn't last, though. 
An alien placed Superman's remains in a regeneration machine and out popped Superman, complete with a new silver and black suit. Superman's black outfit's actually his rebirthing suit, so it's associated with his return from death. And it isn't only comic book fans who saw a version of these threads, either. Director Zack Snyder treated movie buffs to his interpretation of the rebirth suit in the director's cut of 2017's Justice League. There's one element Snyder still felt was missing from his movie versions of Superman, though. He told the New York Post as much in 2012 on the subject of Superman's screen outfit. Snyder said, The costume was a big deal for me, and we played around for a long time. It turns out that Snyder's a fan of Superman's exterior trunks, but he couldn't include them. I tried like crazy to keep the red briefs on him, the director continued. Everyone else said, you can't have the briefs on him. I looked at probably 1,500 versions of the costumes with the briefs on. In the end, the director had to remove Superman's briefs, so to speak, in order to make the hero's appearance modern. He could easily have pruned the cape, too, since such an accessory seems a bit antiquated, at least, that's if you believe superhero suit designer Edna Mode from The Incredibles.